Today, we're diving into the world of sustainable construction with an in-depth look at the innovative and eco-friendly technique of straw bale construction. From its humble origins to its modern application, we'll uncover the many benefits and intricacies of this fascinating building method. So, without further ado, let's get started. Straw bale construction is not just about building houses. It's a philosophy that embraces sustainability, energy efficiency, and affordability. Straw bale houses are relatively rare, but the practice is picking up steam thanks to the growing sustainable design trends. While the construction of modern straw homes has seen a recent resurgence, straw has been used in construction on the African plains since the Paleolithic era. Straw thatched roofs were common in Northern Asia and Europe in past centuries, and straw homes were built in Germany 400 years ago. American Indian teepees were typically insulated for winter with loose straw placed between the outer cover and inner lining. Early settlers of the American West used straw as thatch roofing, but it wasn't until the 1890s that the mechanical baller allowed straw to be used as construction building blocks. Using straw bales as a building material might seem unconventional, but it's been gaining traction among eco-conscious builders worldwide. So, what makes straw bale construction so unique? A straw bale house is made using straw as either a main structural element, insulation, or both. Straw is a natural and renewable material with excellent insulation properties. Preserving straw bales as home insulation or as walls can capture an enormous amount of carbon dioxide, thus helping combat global climate change. And main advantage is that it is a cost-effective construction method which requires much less cost compared to other modern construction techniques. There are two ways to build a straw bale structure, load-bearing and non-load-bearing. A load-bearing house uses the straw bales to provide the structural support for the building. Load-bearing structures are most appropriate in mild climates. A non-load-bearing house uses lumber or some other material for its primary support. The bales then shape the walls and provide the insulation. Places that get lots of snow need that extra support. In construction, the bales are first stacked on a foundation. They are piled on top of each other to form the walls. Next, a layer of plaster made with clay, lime, or cement is applied. Paint may be applied, but is not necessary. What is necessary is to keep the plaster in good condition and to regularly inspect for cracks. If the straw becomes damp, the house can be ruined by mildew. Straw bale insulation, when adequately protected from rain and extended exposure to moisture, can easily last for decades or even centuries. There are living examples of 100-year-old straw bale homes. They perform much better in earthquakes, and when demolishing a straw bale home or a house with straw bale insulation, the straw can easily be used as a biodegradable mulch for your trees or garden. Straw bales have good insulation properties and keep the building warm in winter and cool in summer, with R values between 40 and 60 when built correctly. On the downside, straw bale insulation offers a few drawbacks or situational disadvantages that should be considered. Building with straw bales can be challenging when it comes to obtaining building permits or insurance coverage, as they are not a conventional building material or part of all local building codes. Loose straw is a severe fire hazard. However, thickly packed straw bales might even be less prone to fire than regular wood. When encased by thick stucco or plaster, straw bale insulation poses no severe fire hazard for the home. 